Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen Alpha 3.1 has been released to the first wave wider PTU. So subscribers, concierge and some of the top issue council contributors now have access. Please check your emails to see if you have access now. This release is not under any form of NDA. So let's talk patch notes for this initial release. This is a stress testing patch for the servers and with all the PTU patches, it's not gonna be representative of the live build, which will have more features and less bugs. For example, the Reclaimer and Terrapin are not included in this first iteration of that wider PTU patch, but they will be in the next few days. Also, each PTU will typically have a focus and the various focuses with this particular PTU patch are the testing of ESP and Arena Commander in Swarm and Multiplayer Arena Commander combat. So basically aiming, firing and general ship combat. Uh, racing, so the Razor and other ships plus some updated racing changes need to be tested. And on the PU, the Persistent Universe side, it's Cyclone testing, but realistically it's also core and general gameplay as well. So general travel, movement, general bugs, frame rate variances and all that sort of stuff as well. So let's jump in and see exactly what patch notes we have. General content, they've added a logout timer when logging out in range of other players. They've implemented the character customizer, so players will be required to create a character when attempting to access the persistent universe for the first time. This is allowing you to change the head, eye color, hairstyle, hair color and skin tone of your character. Once selections are made, players can accept or revert back to default. After a custom character is created, that character will be used for all game modes. Characters can be changed after being accepted via the character customization tab in the universe menu. So in the universe, we have safe and persistent logout locations. So ship beds, major stations like Levski, Grim Hex and Port Olisar, these logout locations should be persistent between sessions now. They've added the ability to earn virtual reputation for killing NPC pirates. Vehicle and ship wise, in this patch, we have the Cyclone, the Razor, the Nox Q. We also have some new ship weapons, the size four to six distortion scatter guns and the ballistic scatter gun from size one to three. We've also got the size two series 10 great sword ballistic cannon and a yellow jacket ballistic Gatling size one. We've got a Rhino repeater, the CF447, and the Omni Sky 9 laser cannon. User interface wise, they've added visual changes to better indicate when a player is in focus mode of interaction mode. They've replaced old combat markers with new 3D markers, including target brackets, hit indication, and missile locks. They've added outline and further polish to target slash self visor screens, including additional hit effect for shields and hull areas. They've added an additional MFD screen to customize the view angles of the target slash self-visor screens as well. General feature updates. They've removed the port modification system from all vehicles. There is now an interaction trigger to exit a usable, so if you're using a seat, stool, or whatever. They've reduced the sideways sway of the camera during breathing. Some minor adjustments to options menu text to increase readability. Updates to the AI behavior relating to accuracy, variability, and missile usage, along with bug fixes. They have expanded interactable seating in Grimhex. They've increased the brightness of the interaction highlight on Grimhex's elevator buttons. Lock on interactions during quantum travel to prevent prevent passengers from climbing out mid-travel. They've improved Grimhex's audio ambience, expanded seating usables, and updated some interaction points in Port Olisar. They've lowered the virtue cost for ramming and removed the virtual penalty for illegal parking. So this is when you basically got a uh, reputation for being a criminal. They've updated lighting within Levski hangars, updated the various shopkeepers with additional performance capture and dialogue. They've updated service textures and topography of Crusader's moons, expanded the double landing pad at Port Olisar to accommodate the Reclaimer. Additional environment missions have been added as well. And in regards to missions, they've polished the admin NPC animations. When first opening the Moby Glass, the contract manager should now display the first mission. When accepting a mission, the Moby Glass contract manager automatically displays that mission objectives. Updated the missions with additional dialogue as well. They've reduced the virtue penalty for criminal missions and added virtual reward for killing criminal players. More ship and vehicle updates. They've updated the glass shader on various MFDs for various ships. They've increased the power draw of the EMP when charging, increased the cooldown after use, and lowered the distortion damage. Yes, EMPs are no longer super OP. 
they've added new distortion values to all ship items capable of taking that kind of damage. They've increased the self-destruct timer length on ships that require multiple interactions to exit. They've increased the EM and IR signatures on countermeasures, altered ship countermeasure sizes, and loadouts to better reflect their relative signatures. They've reduced shield health, updates to shields to operate as independent faces for regen. They've increased setback, lowered regen, and regen acceleration they've adjusted countermeasure signals so they decay to reduce the need to spam cms or countermeasures to divert missiles the 300 series has had some hard point changes to its gun mounts now all of the models have size 3 mounts across the board except for the 325a which also in addition to having two size 3 on its wings has a size 4 on its nose also for the ship they've updated the fuel usage and retuned atmospheric flight they've decreased the spread on the sawbuck repeaters in general as well the cargo and trading stuff so kiosks should now display the first two digits after the decimal place under buy and sell prices they've altered the despawn timer on cargo so it will persist for longer there's been various polish to the box carry animations and placing they've added a hollow effect to held items when attempting to place them so players aren't visually blocked by the held item they've added a quick place mechanic where you can hold the left mouse button to start placing you don't need to select the place interaction arena commander stuff so they've removed the ejection ability from multiplayer modes they've allowed the prospector to be selected in race modes players will now periodically gain lives during swarm modes they've removed the interaction for open and close exterior and a lock unlock ship in competitive multiplayer they've reduced the health of vandal scavengers as well star marine wise they've added the custodian laser smg and the prior loadout customizer has been replaced with a management system mirroring the personal management Manager app of the Moby Glass. User interface wise, various menu and Moby Glass audio fixes and improvements have been done. The VMA or Vehicle Manager app should now function while in hangar. The VMA and PMA now use the render to texture tech. They've improved character lighting, color, and brightness for the PMA or Personal Manager app. First person stuff, so they've improved the planet side audio effects. For all first person weapons they've removed ui shake from weapon recoil animations technical stuff there has been lots and lots of performance tweaks and you can see that with a lot of the frame rates there's been various crash fixes clients should no longer get stuck on a black screen when failing to connect to a server it should actually tell you now you should be able to get back into a server known issues and other information so at the moment they're doing controlled tests so they have a limited amount of ships to access in the current ptu some of these ships are semi-working and they're going to be updating and changing those ships each patch for you to have access to them because they want them to be tested in that ptu phase but they don't want them all to be tested some of them aren't fully working with certain mechanics and that sort of stuff that will change from every patch that we get in the ptu there are some other crashes and errors the ifcs fixes are still pending which is a bit annoying the esp isn't working perfectly at all at the moment either and we'll talk about that in a second it is recommended that you delete your user folder after patching as well and there is an error the 40014 which will cause a client crash if this occurs wait 10 minutes and then relaunch to get back into the game so let's talk about the patch very briefly there was a massive amount of bug fixes too which i will link to for those that you that are interested as well as the original patch notes the patch is obviously missing a lot of content still that 3.1 is supposed to have and as i said earlier it's going to appear over the next few days as they focus and test various parts and fix bugs as they move forward gameplay wise it's a stress test it clearly needs a lot of work still it's certainly not perfect it's a ptu patch as we expected Frame rates for me and Nubifire have been pretty awesome. In fact, most of the footage I've got, I've got while playing with Nubifire at the moment uh, in this 3.1 early PTU. I have, however, been getting a pause or hitch every few seconds in some servers. However, the frame rates in general are significantly better. Combat with certain ships in the Persistent Universe is much better. The ESP and IFCS still need a lot of work, though. The ESP is really, really odd when it tries to pull your cursor and tries to predict where a ship's going to go now. It's a bit odd. Um, they still need to work on that, clearly. 
um, but the general combat in the Persistent Universe is much better. However, I had a lot of problems hitting Vandal in my Razor with Omni Skies, so it might not be the best idea to have laser cannons. Um, maybe laser repeaters or ballistic repeaters would have been a much better choice for actually hunting down things in this current PTU. The Tumble Cyclone is exactly what CIG wanted it to be, though. It's a fun June buggy. It's a bit glitchy at the moment. It kind of quivers on the surface of planets. But it is by far the best fun that you can have Moonside at the moment. It, it feels really cool as a vehicle. But please tell me what you'd like to see video-wise about 3.1 in this PTU phase and after it's live in the comments below as it will help me plan what content to get out and when and exactly what people want. Every month we have a ship giveaway for March. It's for the Outpost Building Pioneer, donated by our featured Org Forgotten Heralds, a PMC with a history grounded in UEE military service. Their doctrine focuses on operational agility through custom missions in-game at the moment and in-game training, as well as a friendly active community. Please check out their Org page and Discord below. They are active in Star Citizen now. To be in for a chance of winning that Pioneer though, please make sure you're a subscriber to my channel and then just comment on any of my videos during March. Each video will give you another opportunity to win. Do you have any questions about Star Citizen or Squadron 42's development or this patch or how the patches are evolving or the PTU waves or anything? Please chuck them in the comments below. Also, we will be getting lots of these patches, uh, maybe one every other day, one a day maybe, and we will do the latest patch notes and the state of that patch uh, in videos as well, so do not worry about that. A special thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of them, you can find the links to Patreon, as well as everything else we've talked about down below. All the links are there. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as well, as it really does help me, and I'll see you in the verse. Also, make sure you check out Noobify's videos, because, you know, he helped me get some footage, and he's a good chap. Love you, Noob.